Okay, folks, Wednesday evening before 8 o'clock, and uh, we should be able to get a little bit done. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on uh, one thing before we get into the painting. Is I'm not going to do an official unboxing because it's not that exciting, and I had to unbox it anyways. This is um, from Lit Go. Well, places that I like to plug here and uh, you know I needed to get some stands I was out so uh, I want to show you the stands that I use from them and you guys can check them out now Lipco makes all kinds of stuff um, they make all kinds of thicknesses I prefer what they call the three millimeter thick ones okay three millimeter thick and this is the thickness that, uh, that I like to use on all of my, on all of my um, miniatures here. And they also make the one and a half millimeter thick. And uh, interesting, they're actually the one and a halfs are more expensive than these probably because it's more, um, well, when I went to this size, they didn't make the one and a halfs yet, so. Um, I like the thicker stand because there's a higher chance that you're going to pick up the figure by the stand, not the actual, um, pick up the stand by the, by the, by that, the edge instead of by the actual figure. So I, I, I like this thickness. Um, I've got some 40 by 30s where this is the cavalry size here for, uh, PBA. Got those. I got, uh. 40 by 20s. I don't buy a huge amount. I buy them. These are 25 count. And then uh, the 40 by 15s as well. So you got the heavy infantry, all your skirmishers, and uh, most of the medium infantry war band stuff go on this size. And uh, this is the cavalry. I've got the other sizes already, the 40 by 40s and so forth. And um, so you can choose. I like to go with the heavy D magnetic base bottoms. And you got to buy them separately, so they're sold as two different items. Um, and this is www.litco.net. So most of you guys know that uh, that's what I uh, that's what I use for all my basic needs. So um, yeah, these are the heavy duty magnetic base bottoms. You can stick them on the side of a fridge or you know in a carrying tray. So um, yeah, exciting stuff, right? So, well, we talked about that. So, I'll go ahead and take the opportunities and show you what I care about to keep them from getting damaged. So, I already showed you the stands I use. I already showed you the magnetic inserts I use. This is what I carry tray. Uh, I particularly got this at, uh, I think this one's from Walmart, um, and this was about $6, and it's like a baking tray, and of course it's very magnetic, and the nice thing about it is it has a lid that goes up significantly high, so um, we're looking at maybe one, two, maybe just three inches thick, so any pipe or whatever fit in here just fine. Of course, this is 15 millimeter miniatures, so if you're using 28s, this may not work for you. And this is what I carry my guys in. So they're totally magnetic. Uh, you know, you could hold them upside down on their side and they're not gonna fall. So when you're transporting them from one place to another, you know, you're, they're protected. Um, the reason I had to open up the Litco stands, I knew I was low and I wanted to put uh, on this edifice that I did. This is just uh, made out of uh, plastic card, but I went ahead and put a stand thing on there. So, you know, I don't want to throw this in the terrain box and it get thrown around. And same thing with the camp. So this is what I traveled with these. And uh, you can fit about three DBA armies in each one of these. And these are like $6. So um, this is what I carry in them. So it, uh, it works good for me. And I'm not a science guy, but on the figures from moving because I mean they don't move at all um, so that's what you want now if you flip it upside down onto the ground you know all bets are off um, 
if you get into a car accident while you're traveling from one place to the other, uh, all bets are off. But uh, but they, they work really well. So anyhow, um, I got like uh, I think I got four of these. So they're really in, they're really inexpensive. So and they're just like that cooking thing. This is uh, this is as close as you'll see me to get using a baking tray for something because I'm not a cook. I don't, I don't cook things, but um, this works really well. So. Um, all right, well, enough of that. All right, now let's see where we left off. We left off with, um, actually, I'm gonna try to keep this in order. I'm gonna go ahead and put my Litco stands away. I don't want a big old mess, so. I've got a, a box here, a, a, a bag. Don't pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm I don't have enough caffeine in me. Just listen to what I'm showing you. I'm just not getting that right. We're just gonna throw these in here in the box. Okay. Now we were working on auxilia last time we left off. I get these done because we want to work on the next army. I'm about done with these Irish guys. Now, they saw their battle for the first time uh, Monday night. That uh, video just went up this morning. So, uh, check. They were a hoot. All right. Let's see what we got here. We haven't painted since Sunday? Let's see how our paints are doing here. Well, the black and the white are very useful. So are the metallic colors, so. But it's been closed the whole time, so. Let's get this, uh, I like to paint over on here, so let's make sure that's in view. And this, I've got four auxiliary guys completely done. I'm working on this guy. I think what last thing I left off is, this guy looked a lot like Sam Elliott, so we're gonna paint him like Sam Elliott. Um, this guy here, let's see if we can get a Well, I need two hands. How about this? How about I do that? Okay, so anyways, so we're working on him. He's kind of has like a basket weave type shield, so um, that's actually, he's kind of has like a basket weave type shield, so um, that's actually sticker stuff there. Wicker picker. And uh, he's got one shoe, the man with one red shoe. Okay. Cup zero. And all right, let's get started. So we gotta finish this guy up and paint four more auxiliary guys. And then we're done. I think I'm gonna opt out of doing the allies. I was gonna do uh, three stands of these Islesmen. And uh, I can come back to them later, but I wanna work on a different project. So what it is, I don't know exactly. I've got, um, let's say four armies that uh, I'm, uh, I'm debating as to which ones to do, uh, about four. And, uh, you know, I'll make the final determination when uh, I get to that point and they're complete, so. Anyhow, all right. Well, hopefully you guys will do some painting too and just don't listen to me jibber jabber. So, well, the first thing we need to do is we need new water. Because water is evaporating more than paints out. So I'll be right back in about uh, a minute flat. Yeah, so if you guys haven't seen our video yet that we shot the other night, you guys should. Have one of the players came from three hours away to play with us. And uh, it's about a three hour, three and a half hour video. We knocked out six battles pretty easily. And um, yeah, good stuff. It's Saloy silliness. So a lot of light troops, 
everybody had to have a minimum of six stands of Saloy or skirmishers, as I like to call them, as they should have always been called, but that's a different matter altogether. People get confused what uh, what Saloy are. Hey, Joe, working on Keimer Artillery Elephant. There you go. Big heffalump with a big elastic band on it. There you go. Big heffalump with a big elastic band on his back. Okay. All right, let me find myself here because I, I kind of picked everything up here. Let's, uh, let's get our usual suspect uh, brushes. These are over here. We'll just let them dry out. Let's see. And these two. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started now. Bring this a little closer. And closer is better for me because if somebody types something in, I can see it. Because most of the time I'm running here without the glasses. I'm, uh, I'm painting and in... instead of painting in 2020, I'm painting in 2200. So <laughs> I don't know exactly what it translates into, but it's pretty poor, but pretty poor, but all right. All right. So we did the face, We've got hair to do on him. Okay. Let's go ahead and do his, uh, before we decide on the hair color, let's go ahead and do his, uh, basket type shield. So we're going to grab us a um, light color. We use dark sand for his javelin, so we don't want to use that. We want to use something a little bit different. Um, this is skeleton bone. Let's see what skeleton bone looks like. Uh, let's, let's grab the, about this color here. A little bit too light. I'll just go with good old Arachnid sand. The color known as Iraqi sand. Who knows if that's really what Iraqi sand actually looks like. Um, it's kind of irrelevant. No. a dark brown as a mix in. We're not going to use um, black. So let's grab um, leather brown. Vallejo leather brown. All right. Mm. And we'll grab my newest addition. Wherever it's hanging out at these days. Here we go. I've started using this. Uh, their brush thinner. Not to clean the brush, but just to call it wetting drops. All right, and we don't have to use a, a perfect brush for this first one, because we're just gonna cover the entire shield area. And a dark mix of this stuff, or a darker mix of this stuff. All right, let's put this here. And, okay, close that chat box. Thank you. All right. Are we on screen here? All right. This is a leather brown. We're just going to cut the thing. All 
Man, it's, it's too it's too bright. It's too light. It's too light. If you start too light, you don't have enough value left to come up and make it pop. So Come lighten us up some. Okay, now I have a feeling I'm going to have to do some kind of dry brushing. So let's see why. I, let's see if I can get away with this. Let's try to dry brush ever so slightly, <laughs> as Mitch would say. few instances of dry brushing that I use. I don't do much of it. It's not that I like it. I just, most of the time, I prefer a little bit more control than, uh, than the dry brushing normally gives me, so. paint up those uh, the borders there let's go to this do we have any white left let's put some new one down started painting at the end of my day I do a lot better like if it was first thing in the morning but unfortunately that's not really doable Monday through Friday so unless I have one of those days off but on a work day really not an option
So I mentioned earlier, this is a pretty large figure. Like size wise, he's almost 20 millimeter in scale. So they had to make it out of wicker. So way too much. That's my fluff story about these guys. <laughs> What else we got? We got a belt. We got a scabbard. We have one shoe. We have a spear tip. His javelin tip. And um, and his hair. All right. Get in here and still got the metallic color alive here. Let's go ahead and put that down. We have no doubt we're going to paint that. I mentioned earlier that um, I've kind of started doing in the last couple of years this painting style that I like to call uh, paint what you know. Like if you get in a lull and you're like, man, I don't, I don't know what I want to do here. I, I'm, I'm afraid of of painting this and it not turning out well or or uh, I, you know I know I want them to have a green shirt but I don't know what color pants will go with it then paint what you know you're gonna have you know if, if you know if, if you can't figure anything else out maybe so uh, you know just don't let some kind of uh, indecision cloud and stop your entire project because uh, you know I, I can pretty much reach anything that that I can see. I think most people can do that as well if they just give themselves a chance. So, you know, if you're hung up like you don't know what color the shield is, then just avoid the shield. Just paint with the things that uh, you have no doubt what color you want to make them. So, um, all right, well, he's got a, um, he has a, uh, a scabbard. We're going to go ahead and do it the leather color um, because we didn't do that in a couple of the other ones. So, even though it sounds like, well, duh, you'd do it in that color. Um, I haven't done, no, it's cavalry brown. I got all my paints here, but I've got to see through my light to see the right color. Here we go, saddle brown. Yeah, saddle brown. Saddle brown it is. So. And as always, you guys have got any questions, you got any chit chat, you got any mind, let me know. As long as it's not current events, politics, anything like that. So <laughs> I think we got enough of that shit show last night. So <laughs> let's. Had a guy, um, a frequent observer. I think he's in the UK. Um, frequent observer, he's comments significantly on my posts and videos and stuff like that. And uh, he mentioned that the video that he did the other night, he got a, he got a kick out of us talking about uh, world geography here in the States. Um, I actually, before I got into doing historical gaming, that was my jam, was, uh, was uh, world geography and stuff. Uh, I was always really good at it. You know, I grew up in a time period when, you know, you, we had big books that we'd bring to the table when you, you, know, you had breakfast the first thing in the morning or whatever. You know, you'd take these books like an atlas or something like that and you bring them to the table and, you know, you look at them enough and you can't help but... Uh, learn stuff and I used to know all the countries, capitals, all that stuff when when people were in fifth and sixth grade they were struggling with um with um with the states here. Uh 
I knew all the world stuff, but you know, use it or lose it. And I really haven't used most of it to the degree that uh, I did before. So I've lost a little bit of it and you know, other countries have been created and so forth. So um, like I told him in the comment, I said, you know, geography used to be my thing. I actually had a geography class I took in college um, as an elective and uh, one. I'm pretty sure Yeltsin was in the U.S. At, in the, in Russia at that time. But anyways, this guy mentioned that he'd been to Russia before, before Russia had uh, had uh, kind of collapsed. The USSR split up, and uh, he told us a couple stories on there. And, uh, you know, he um, was kind of a weird dude, the teacher. I remember he started off the class with, I've been all over the world, and know where all the good places are to get drugs. And I'm like, okay, that's that's nice. But I ended up being in class, it was a breeze for me because he'd go over stuff and then he'd give you like this ditto sheet, like a blank thing that would have like, it would just have the outline of South America and you had to fill in where all the countries are like freehand or they'll give you two. One of them was like for countries and one of them and stuff and man, I. That, that was easy for me. I had an edge on everybody else in that. So that's probably the last time I used it. Um, I mean, I use it all the time, but, um, but uh, you know, history and stuff like that, like there's some really good programming on YouTube. There's one, there's, there's a, a group of guys, uh, a group of people, I don't know if they're all guys, and they don't say, um, called, they have a channel called, um, Kings and Generals. And Kings and Generals um, has a really good way of describing really complicated uh, military campaigns and stuff like that. And they do it in the format of using it on a map and also of giving you like these little counters of like, you know, where people's troops are moving around. But it's all map related. So he's constantly like how they move in relation to each other is all on a map. So. Having a geograph, uh, you know, being um, a fan of things that are geographic related, really helpful in that. But um, they have a really good channel. You guys probably already know about Kings and Generals, but there's another one that's pretty good called Baz Battles, B A Z Battles. And they also do the same thing. They'll have like counters, they'll, they'll do like actual battles where, um, they don't use NATO symbols or anything like that, but they use these symbols for what the units and they kind of move them around and it, and it gives you kind of a, a spatial awareness um, of how some of these uh, conflicts take place. So a couple of really good sites. I don't check them off, often as much as I do because honestly, lately with me making my own content, um, I'm not watching those things while I'm painting. I'm doing this instead, which is, um, I get a lot more done. So, um, yeah, check out those sites if you haven't seen them. It's, uh, Kings and Generals and Baz Battles. They're very similar, um, but they, um, they're really cool if you're interested in military history. So, um, anyhow, they didn't ask me to plug them or anything. They don't need me plugging them. I'm small change. They're, you know, they do real professional videos and they probably do that for a living, honestly. Um, but check them out. It's always good to learn stuff. So, um, yeah, it's gaming, but it's still about learning things. At least it is for me. All right, so we're going to finish the the scabbard. There's not much to it. Like, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here. He's. It looks like he would have. This would be a scabbard for like a sword. Maybe it's not a scabbard for a sword at all. But the, I don't see a hilt or anything on it. A pommel. None of that stuff on the sword. So we're just going to. Um, we're just going to paint what we see. You know. So I don't see it. So I can't really paint it. So. Joe Coton, why is it there are not so many Book One armies? Um, I don't know. You mean as far as people having them or like in the book? 
Because they have like 62 or 63 armies. Um, and then book three, book four has 85. Not counting individual variations. Book two has like 80. 80. 83, something like that. Book three is at least in the 80s as well. I don't think it gets into the 90s. But book one, yeah, stuck like at 63 or something. I'm not sure, you know. Um, I'm going to say book one is the least popular, but that just might be me. I, I mean, the thing is, is there's a lot of armies that they don't make figures for in book one. Um, now, some would say, well, you know, you can use Neo-Babylonians for Kassites, and you can use uh, these guys for these, and there's nobody that makes a dedicated Libyan-Egyptian range, but you can make them by using... Um, some of the Libyan figures uh, and mix in some uh, New Kingdom Egyptian type guys and make a mishmash of things. Um, but, um, you know, you could make most of the armies. I think the problem from my standpoint that book one armies have is that when it comes down to researching battles, uh, what people wore, war in um as well no i mean the farther back you go the less information survives and there just isn't much on book one armies i mean unless you're talking about the old testament uh in, engravings or etchings on something like uh, uh temples of karnak uh steelies you might find in the desert that kind of stuff there just isn't a whole lot of book one what book one stuff many of those civilizations um uh their language either they didn't have a written language or it just didn't survive so um you know it's a shame of course but um you know or you end up playing but you know a lot of guys that all they wear is basically some kind of a linen tunic and they're all barefoot you know whether they're uh vedic indians or they're uh you know uh, neo-babylonians or elamites or something like that That's why I don't like them. I, I don't. I don't like those armies because, you know, I have to invent too much of what they are, like out of no, out of nothing, and uh, and they don't. I don't get the paint flags or anything like that. Not that the troop compositions of book one armies are not good. Um, they're quite cool actually, but um, you know, and there are some people that like book that early early stuff. Um, more than um, than some other stuff. Well, that's good. So now we're to the point where we're going to make a shoe. Um, I don't want to make it black. Um, let's uh, let's start with this. Let's start with this leather brown. Oh, it's a leather shoe. Go figure. Use leather brown, right? Genius. Now we're going to start with this. And. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, Joe, but um, um, yeah, there aren't as many book one armies. I don't know. You know, the further you go back in time, less stuff exists, you know? And the shame of it is, is that not only did maybe the stuff didn't exist, but a lot of it didn't survive. Like you've got those terrorist sons of bitches that's storing like ISIS blowing up uh, ancient ruins. And that's, you know, you need that stuff to, you know, so we can remember, you know, that might be one of the few things that you know about a people. So you got to preserve what we have. Because, um, you know, very limited information on what survives. Or to... Middle East and have a talk with those guys and maybe they'll listen to me. <laughs> uh, no, thanks. I'm needed here. <laughs> I 
I'll paint figure. I'll paint figures from the Middle East, and we'll, we'll call it that. <laughs> All right, let me give this guy a little bit of a highlight on the shoe here. We could use this one. We don't have to use pure white. This should be fine. So that's the, that's the thing about the Old Testament. Is that's one of the few things from that time period that. At least it's something that um, has some kind of information that was written down. And, of course, it's not very helpful for, like, if you're doing armies of China, you know, because there's stuff that's it's in a limited area, you know, pretty much only useful for stuff in the, uh, the Levant. So, um, okay, so, right, so now we got to do his hair. So let's... Um, Let's give them, let's start working with a pretty dark color. The other thing about Book One Armies is Kingdom Egyptian, definitely the most popular Book One Army I've seen. Um, there's lots of armies that nobody has in book one that I've never seen anybody play. There's nothing worse than going to a tournament and you're playing somebody who has the same army you have. That's That pretty much sucks. up here yes what's up okay I'm being coming just a moment
Okay. I've been unsummoned. Figured I'd go take a potty break while I was at it. All right. And two boring people are still watching it. <laughs> you guys. Oh, lost one. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, yeah, it doesn't happen when I paint at five in the morning. All right. Where were we? We're in some kind of a paint and mustache or whatever on this guy. I am still here. Yes, the loyal disciple. <laughs> Is that you, Judas? <laughs> Hey, this is what I would do. I would uh, I would uh, watch other people do stuff while I was doing things myself. So it's too difficult watching like a video or something like that because you end up looking up a lot and it ends up being, you know, you end up getting nothing done. But, but yeah, I, or watch unboxing. There's a couple guys that uh, I like to, I like to listen to them because they have a very calm voice, unlike mine. I'm not going to say they're slow. That sends the wrong message. They're very soothing. So, um, they're not as caffeinated as I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's usually what I would listen to uh, on YouTube. And, um, yeah, I have that in the background. Now, are we going to bring it up a little bit more? I think so. I think we're going to, we're going to get up a little bit more oomph. And uh, not that much. Gee whiz. And um, done with this 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 guy's done okay ah uh, just a little bit more on the mustache let's make that stand out a little bit more Okay, we're done with them. Now this is uh, the fifth one. Okay, four left. Let's do this guy right here. Looks like he's wearing capris. I don't know what the hell that says about him, but <laughs> we'll take anybody in our army as long as they fight. <laughs> <laughs> we don't judge. <laughs> hey, Julian, how you doing? You're listening while I work. Beats having the TV on in the background. Yeah. Well, I'm a hell of a lot better than the news. I can tell you that much. <laughs> This guy right here. Now, this guy's a little different. He has kind of a, he has kind of an overshirt, and he's got pants, or as they say across the pond, he's wearing trousers. Um, Mm. 
So he doesn't have a long shirt. All right, we're gonna make his pants saffron. And we're going to not have an undershirt color under the shirt that's open. We're just gonna paint it flesh. And then the overshirt will be, well, we don't know what color that's gonna be. So let's just, um, let's paint what we know. So let's go ahead and do his little saffron pants. Listening while you work. I can't listen to anything while I work. While I do work stuff? No. Call it self coaching. But I can't listen to music or anything. Steaks galore if I did that. All right, let's see if we can get away with doing this. Let's pull. Jeez. And let's open this thing back up. Go ahead and put the big ass needle back. Okay, we use this to put the flags around it while we're putting them in place. So. Somebody's got a loud motorcycle. Okay. Always floored by people. Spend big money for having a shitty, for having a shitty sounding motorcycle. Okay. So let's switch this around. We'll use this. I resort to using this little thing. I've got um, I've got something I purchased a while ago on the cheap, and I figured it would be really handy, and it isn't. It's it's an extremely poor design, and what it is are these things right here. You know, these actually came in a set of uh, multiple of them. I had uh, one. I think it came with two, maybe a third one. I had one, and actually made by uh, Low Cornell. So okay, so that's. It's uh, made for painting, but the tray I used, um, the paint sticks to it and uh, it'll dry up on me and you try to rinse it under hot, uh, hot water and everything and the paint won't come off. And I just don't understand why. I mean, this is plastic. It's got a lot of lubrication elements to it, as I like to call it. It flexes, but when you put acrylic paint on it, it, uh, it doesn't, it's hard to clean back up. and. It's not so much that if you put another color on one that's dried, it's an issue, but it can flake off and then you'll get little bits of the paint in what you're painting. But um, I found this the other day, so I figured I'd show you guys. But I guess I need to get one of these made of metal. Then it'll clean better, but um, I don't really need it for, for anything uh, that much. Just if I'm doing like, um, I just figured I'd mention that. Like if I, even if I was doing enamels and stuff, I don't, um, uh, I don't know um, why it sticks so well to it. It's very, very strange. It's very strange that um, too quiet home miss office banter. Uh, I wish I could work at home. I wish I could wear whatever the hell I wanted to. How about that? Um, uh, I use a ceramic tile. Okay. I, I used to use a plastic tile, like a shim, because uh, they don't use that anymore. Ceramic tile, I don't have one laying around. I guess that would work. I wanted something that has like a well in it, so I can put some of this liquid in it, it doesn't float away on me. But um, anyhow, I find that very strange that it sticks so darn well to that. You know, I, I don't have 
I have no idea why that's the case. And like cheap, cra cheap craft paint too. It's like, you know, it's not like I'm using like enamels or acrylic enamels or anything. It's, it's like cheap ass craft paint. It's still stick. Oh, well. It's not that big a deal because I don't use that. I, don't, I wouldn't use that type of thing that often. But all right, back to the saffron pants. Oh, we're using the, we're using way too fancy a brush for this. This is just the bottom color. What happened to the one I have? This is the problem about um, painting without my glasses on. I can't find myself. Here we go. About three years ago, I had to start using taking my glass X until the end of the evening. I just paint in 2020 vision, but you know, I think it was 45, 44, or one of those. I started getting the old man vision thing, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's extremely disturbing for somebody who's been significantly nearsighted their entire life, and all of a sudden. What gets thrown upon them is, oh, you can't see this because it's too close to you. What? It's 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 pretty mind-boggling for me because I've been nearsighted as long as I remember, probably since seven, plus six and a half. And um, you know, the fact that something's too close to me because when I have my contacts and I'd still paint at this distance, which is uh, just for a comfort level, uh, you know, you're talking about my eyes probably eight inches away. I can't see that. It's, it's, it's blurry, big time blurry. So it's kind of a shocker for somebody who's uh, used to being able to see better when they got closer to things. So oh, we got a little limp thing here. There you go. Don't misbehave on camera You make me look bad. But now I just paint without my contacts in. Done. Now we can get rid of this and now use something that has a little bit more detail on it. So I used something that I had for a long time the other day for the first time and it passed with, with flying colors. And that was the acrylic sealer that I had. I had uh, a bottle of this uh, Model Master Acryl in uh, clear flat. And uh, this is what I used to brush on the Irish flag. And it totally, well, this isn't the Irish flag, but it, uh, it got rid of uh, almost all of the shine on it. This is one of the Russian ones, so. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out, so I probably got this um, probably three or four years ago. I never used it, so anyhow, that's cool. That's what I'll be using to seal up my... Uh... It's a lot more forgiving than the... Uh... It's not as good of a coating as the... Uh, the uh, uh, What's it called? The lacquer? The, the lacquer... Uh, that's not it. Well, the dull coat lacquer. It's not as good of a coating. But um, the dull coat lacquer, once you put it on, you don't want to brush over the same spot again while it's wet. And it, that isn't a problem with the, uh, the acrylic one. 
you know. A report. I gotta start thinking what color top shirt I'm gonna make on this guy. But we're gonna end up doing the flesh first. If you do write something on there, just be patient. I'm trying to look at it from side to side, but I don't have a notification symbol or any a sound or anything um, to see if somebody's typed anything. And that's probably a good thing. Otherwise, you'd get these chirp. You'd be getting this chirp or a ding, you know, every so often. But you know. Um, It's almost nine. That's late for me. <laughs> nine and a half hour. Even though the other night I think I was up till like over one o'clock Monday night. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the flesh on this dude. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's go fit. Let's go grab my flesh mix, which is. Uh, I know I've talked about this a million times. Red leather, and of course black, white, and sunny skin tone. My Caucasian mix, I should say. Man, it doesn't look like I'm gonna make it to the end of this guy, though. I'm beat. Well, you know, if it was a weekend, if it was in the morning and I started painting, I'd, I'd be working on some coffee, but waking up every 30, falling asleep and then waking up every 30 minutes, you know, not have a restful night's sleep. Now, frankly, there's not much worth staying up for anymore. You know, I'd rather, I'd just as soon get up early, so. So I'm gonna do a little mix here. Get us our black, the red leather. A little bit more black than that. Okay, we're gonna paint all the flesh. If I have to cut close, if I have to, uh, you know, shut this down, um, over painting the night, it's not a big deal. At least I got, you know, over an hour do of done of something. So, you know, um, I'd rather get more done, but it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, 
have to accept the fact that not everybody every day is going to be just as productive as it, any other one. So. See. Yeah, I know that uh, if I'm driving alone, if I do any kind of driving in the car, I, I tend to get pretty sleepy. But if I'm like listening to somebody talk or uh, listening to news or something like that in the car, I'm I'm a lot more likely to stay awake. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make the, make it much longer. I am really shutting down, so. I apologize if you guys wanted to see this guy's face, so. Yeah, I'm gonna have to call it a night. I'm, I am just struggling here completely. I'm gonna about to fall asleep at the wheel. But anyways, we got uh, we got in over an hour, so um, that's not horrible, I guess. Um, and we will pick this guy up uh, where we left off now. Um, yeah, we don't have a whole lot to do. These are fairly simple figures, but man, I need to stay awake, you know. <laughs> I've been up since 5 a.m. and uh, see the previous night I got a decent night's sleep last night but the night before I only got like four hours maybe even a little bit less than that and I think I'm still dealing with that um, stayed up way too late gaming well we stayed gaming until about 11 o'clock and then I chit chatted there for about another hour so anyhow that kind of threw me back so uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe uh, so you guys uh, will know when any videos come out because they'll, you'll get notified. So uh, anyhow, anyhow, we will catch you guys uh, next time. You guys have a good night. Bye-bye.